the Nissan Leaf is an old name in a new market. And while the Leaf has been the default affordable electric family car for quite some years, this all new 2018 model needs to really move the game on if it's gonna keep up with a flood of new competition. And the good news is that it really does, not least with that electric driving range, which is now up to 168 miles. That's right up there with the Renault Zoe, if a little way off the big capacity battery Hyundai Kona. The Leaf's charging port is set at the front of the car, which is the most convenient place for it. And you can open it from the key or from the inside of the car. The good news is that the Leaf comes with all the cables that you could need to charge it up from a three-point domestic socket or from the standard Type 2 connector that you get in a lot of fast chargers. And it comes with this very snazzy looking port, which will charge you up from a 50 kilowatt charger in about 40 minutes for an 80% charge. Driving the Nissan Leaf is as easy as it gets. It really is pretty much just push and go, and all the controls are nice and light and precise. It feels secure. So ultimately, great for driving around town. It's absolutely perfect, while still feeling really quite grown up and good on the motorway as well. Even more impressive then is that the performance is very good. It's actually really quite fun. You can sort of outgun surprisingly sports-oriented cars off the traffic lights in a Nissan Leaf, which is quite entertaining. One thing that will take some getting used to is the e-pedal. You can see this explained in full in our video on brake regeneration, but it's essentially a system that allows you to drive at town speeds without using the brake pedal. The Leaf slows down so aggressively when you ease off the accelerator that it will come to a complete halt quite quickly. So you can actually get through town traffic very easily without using the brake at all. You do get used to the e-pedal system after a while, and you can obviously turn it off if you really don't like it. Regardless, it's one of those things that's gonna feel odd at first, but you will get used to it. On top of that, you get a really practical family car. The Leaf's boot is usefully bigger than that of a VW Golf's, and there's a place to put the cables in the boot, while two adults will be comfortable in the back seats. The Leaf's dash does actually feel pretty swish. This is definitely one of the areas that it's really moved on from the previous generation. The materials feel really nice and it looks pretty classy. It's not quite up there with the e-Golf, I wouldn't say, but still, really comfortable place to sit. You also get loads of standard equipment on the Nissan Leaf, even in the base trim, where it represents great value next to its rivals. That the Nissan Leaf was the best-selling electric car when it had almost no rivals is one thing. The fact that this second generation car deserves to remain a default name in the affordable electric hatchback market is quite something else given the host of new rivals it faces. It's not just a great electric car, it's also a really good family car. It's spacious, it's comfortable, it's practical. So if you're after an affordable, useful electric hatchback, then look no further. The Nissan Leaf should go straight to the top of your shortlist. For more electric car advice and reviews, go to drivingelectric.com.